Hello, viewers. This is Tommy Emmanuel, and this is May the Rock Be With You. Yes. Tommy Emmanuel, how are you, sir? Very good. Thank you, Troy. Everything all right in your world? Oh, it's pretty good. It's uh, Wednesday morning and not too bad at all. Yeah, it's Tuesday afternoon and it's very fine. That's my back window there. <laughs> That'll do it. Where are you? I'm at home in Nashville. Oh, actually, and of course, there's a guitar in the background. <laughs> Guys <laughs> everywhere, yeah. the way it should be. Now, welcome to May the Rock be with you, Tommy. It's an absolute pleasure to talk to you. I've been a fan for oh, over thirty odd years, so this is a, a bit of an honour for me. Oh, thank you, brother. I appreciate well, that. Well. That's all right. Now, of course, the best thing is you're finally, finally heading back to Australia to play some shows. The first in four yeah. years. Now, can you give us an idea on what people can expect at these shows? Absolutely. Um, well, I have a lot of new songs. Um, I have a new album coming out in mm. April before the tour in in uh, in May, um, and uh, oh, I've been working real hard on everything uh, in this last few years, and you know I've got uh, I've really got some wonderful songs that I'm I'm enjoying playing so much, and uh, and so, some of the new stuff that I haven't recorded yet. I'm going to put in. I'm going to open the show with some new things. So, okay, look forward to that. Do we go back through the catalogue, or is it more than newer stuff? Uh, no, I well, I have certain songs that you know. Well, it really doesn't matter where I go now. People expect to to hear you know Angelina or the the Endless Road um, song songs like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and people love to hear the Beatles music, and so I've been I've been working on expanding my Beatles uh, repertoire awesome. <laughs> and uh, and getting a few other tunes in there, and uh, I've kind of reworked uh, the 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 ones that I'm kind of known for, Day Day Tripper and Lady Madonna. I've been mm -hmm. really worked reworked those, and and everything's a lot kind of tougher, you know. Mm, no, fair enough. Now I know it's a full band show, but do we do some acoustic solo stuff in the middle there, it's or is not it a band show? It's not. No, it's just me. Oh wow, that's even better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's definitely not a band show. No, well, you're a one man band. It's a one man band. Yeah, and they're go. all in here. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> uh, I uh, well, um, Anthony Snape will be opening, and Anthony, as you know, is a great Australian singer songwriter. Mm and a, a dear friend of mine and he lived here in nashville in my house for years and he had two children while he was here with his wife wow. and uh so, yeah we we always have had a great a great bond a great relationship so Excellent. i'm looking forward to having anthony on the show and i've talked him into uh uh learning a couple of dragon songs so we can we can uh, i can go back to my dragon days and nice. <laughs> <laughs> Get in there and play some rain for me. Rain's my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Well, what a song. If you go out in the rain. But I was thinking, I was I was thinking more along the lines of <laughs> Yeah. Uh... Nice. Mark Hunter's voice was so so fantastic, but oh, yeah. just too high. Uh, I can't sing the songs in in their key because Mark's voice is always too high for me. But he had such power up there, you know. He's a magic magic person. Now I've been seeing you live since the early nineties. Uh, every time you play, it's pure emotion, and you can truly feel the music. How does the live aspect of the show allow you to do this? Well, uh, first of all, you have to you have to uh, know that I'm there to give you everything. Mm. You know, when I walk out on stage, I'm going to play like my life depends on it because that's the only way I know how to work. You know, I have never coasted on anything in my life ever. You know, and, and what was it? <laughs> my 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 ex wife she she wrote she said one day you don't do things by half do you you know <laughs> and and it, it's 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 true um, so I love entertaining people I love being on stage it's all I've ever done my whole life so mm. um, you know 
and I want to I want to have a great experience as much as I want you to have a great experience. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and this cause can cause a dilemma sometimes because the truth is, Troy, that uh, some nights are more magical th than than others. Mm -hmm. And some of you, you may not pick it, but I can tell you the truth is, is that it's a big ask to be, for it, it to be, absolute magic every night it's a big ask yeah. so uh the on the nights where i've done everything to prepare i'm in tune i'm i've eaten i've uh, i've done a meet and greet i'm in a, i'm in great spirits i'm ready to kill out there and i i get out there and and struggle and and my mind i my mind wanders and i'm like you know and uh on those kind of times that's where you better have a good repertoire. You better have mm. a good show to play without any of the magic. You know what I mean? So uh, even on my worst night, I can stand on my songs and my arrangements and know that I can still deliver a show that will the people will love. But, um, you know, when you have a great show, my first thought is, oh, God, i got to do it again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> because how am, gonna, how am I going to top that one? It was so yeah. wonderful, and you know. But that's just life, isn't it? You know, we are yep. different all the time. You know. Yeah, fair enough. Now, along with the shows, we mentioned the new album that's on the way in April. Accomplice Two is coming. Can you tell us a bit about how these songs came about for the album? Um, well, the uh, the songs were according to what artists that were that would be interested in working with me and that mm. had time to to come and actually play live and record um so with 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 people like billy strings it was a walk up start it was easy because billy and i had played together on several festivals around america and um so you know we could have played a whole bunch of things but we both love doc watson and were both really influenced by him and inspired by him. So we decided to do Doc's Guitar and Black Mountain Rag, two of the most iconic bluegrass songs that Doc Watson ever did. And we just put it together. And that was live, and it was a one take straight through, you know. Oh, wow. wow. And uh, the same thing with with Molly Tuttle uh, and and uh, uh, the, the, the song... Um, uh, um, uh, White Freightliner Blues. Uh, mm. uh, she knew that she learned that song when she was a little girl. It, it's a uh, it's a Towns Van. Uh, it was uh, Van Towns Van Sand. What's his name? Mm. Oh, she, I can't remember his name. But anyway, it's it's one of his songs, and um, uh, she taught it to me while we were on oh, a well. cruise about three years ago and uh, she said it goes like this and she played it and then you solo here and you solo there and okay right you know and so that's what we did w when we recorded the song I just had her in the vocal booth uh, with a, a mic on her voice and a mic on her guitar and she just sat there and sang it live and played live mm -hmm. and I was on the other side of the glass in the middle of the room with a mic on me and we were just looking at each other and I'd just get cues from her and she'd go like that and I'd play a solo and then I'd look at her and she'd play it. And it, that's how we how we did it. Uh, for, for bands like Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, um, uh, I wanted to recreate um, the Tennessee Stud, which was originally on the Will the Circle Be Unbroken album um, from, you know, the 60s. And uh, so uh, Doc Watson did did the song on that album, hmm. and um, so we kind of recreated it. And with with uh, Little Feet, uh, I've always loved the song Cajun Girl, and so it was an opportunity for us to do, do that it. and play yeah. as a band. And I got to sing in the in the chorus, and and Sam Bush came in and played the fiddle, and it, it was great, you know, and it was all live up in the studio. So that's excellent. And it's been five years since Acopolis won. So now was why was now the right time for number two? I just felt it was, you know, 
it, it was the right time. And and I really felt the urge to work with other people. That's what I and, thought. <laughs> and take that chance because uh, since we've all been out working again, finally, since COVID and all that, um, everybody was real excited. And, there, and, and I was able to get, you know, people at short notice, you know, Mm. And um, so that was good. The Michael McDonald track that I I really love, Michael sent that to me and it was just a demo and I built the band around it. I I, I put real drums and bass and uh, guitars on it. And, um, and, and then uh, the last thing I did was all the lead parts on the nylon string uh, because I wanted that to be like, I wanted to play around his vocal and stuff. I, I didn't want... Um, uh, you know, I didn't want everything to be like, you know, too structured. Mm. I, I wanted us to kind of interact a little. So th that's what I did with that yeah. with, with that track. Yeah, fair enough. Now, over time, it can be very easy to say what can change. But what for you is the one thing that's always remained the same with what you do? Uh, my desire to make the best music I can. Nice. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, and also... Uh, my love of recording, you know, I really love recording, but I don't, I do not like trying to make everything perfect and make everything perfectly, you know, uh, computerized so I can line everything up and everything sounds perfect and everything put in tune and all that stuff. I don't like doing any of that stuff. I, I like getting real people who can really play or really sing or both. And we work together. And now we're going to capture this awesome. because to me, recording is not manufacturing music. It's capturing it. And that's, that has never changed with, with, with me. Even when I was playing, you know, TDK commercials or Coca-Cola commercials back in the seventies and eighties in Sydney, uh, I would always go for it. And, th and that's why people hired me because mm. I brought something to the track that you know, you, you could get another guitar player to come in and read the part and play it, and it would be fine. But I always brought that that um, uh, uh, spontaneity, and and you know, maybe this will work. You know, like and I remember when 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 we did um, uh, it was a commercial for something, and I played the demo, and I I wanted the I thought the drums should be like Stuart Copeland from. Mm police and i played it and and i put some cymbal crashes and and kind of anticipated the beat and stuff like that and the producer the first time was like it's a bit much isn't it and i said play it again you know and so we, we played it back and then i put a bass guitar on it and the whole thing the bass just brought everything down like that and so the drums had an, a level of excitement that uh didn't get in the road of the track at all it, it made it come to life and so wow. We, uh, uh, when they were making the final of, of that, I got the call to come and play guitar and they hired, you know, other guys to play drums and bass and it never sounded any good. So the guy got me back to redo. <laughs> <laughs> One man band. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you've just, you just got to follow your instincts and, and, and not be afraid to say, this is what I think it should be like. And if you disagree, that's okay. Mm. You know, but yeah. I, I, I'm not going to sit here and just be a servant. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to serve the music in the best way I, I can. Beautiful. I love that. Now let's look back a little bit further because the journey turns 30 this year. Now in those 30 years, how do you feel you've progressed yeah. as a player? I didn't think of that. Yeah. Years. It came out in, in 93. Mm. Wow. I hope I've progressed as a player. I really do. Uh, I think I think some of the newer things that I've written are probably some of my, my best work, but I'm not sure because I really love what I wrote and what I played on that album. You know, I, I poured my heart into that album mm. and I I did something that I hadn't done in a long time. I made sure that I I, I got with other writers and, and I collaborated as a songwriter, you know. That, that album was such a labour of love for me because I'd had the success of the previous albums. So I was in a... 
blessed position where I could plan time off and not have to worry about, you know, paying bills and paying tax and doing all this. Uh, I could afford to spend time just being a songwriter. So uh, I remember by the time I got to L.A. to do all the pre-production for that album, I had 22 songs. Wow. Well, that I'd written in in a month with <laughs> with all different songwriters, including David Hirschfelder. Mm. Uh, and we wrote the journey and um, if your heart tells you to, um, and uh, picket fences. Yeah, we, he had three songs with me on that album, um, and it, it was a joyous occasion making that 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 album. Brilliant. I'll have to give it another spin today. Now, I always like asking the question, I wish I wrote it. So if there's one song in the entire world that we, you wish you'd written, what would it be and why? Imagine. Yep. It's the greatest <laughs> song piece I've ever heard. Mm. Yeah. That, that's that's an easy yep. oh, Well, I could say, uh, I could say what song I wish I'd written. <laughs> there's so many of them. <laughs> mm. Imagine you know, a good one. Yeah. Imagine is the first one that that uh, every time I play it, I'm amazed by it. Every time I hear Lennon sing it, I, he just g- grabs me so deeply, you know, and, and uh, whenever I hear someone uh, playing it and, and not being true to the original melody, boy, it gets makes my blood boil. Yeah, you that's know? one you can't really muck around with. Don't mess with that. It's the yeah. same as, you know, like this... Um, yeah, you know, you'll 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 walk into a place and there'll be a guitar player going da, 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 da. I hate that shit. You know, don't do that. You know, <laughs> so, you know, it's, yep. the song is perfect. It doesn't need us. You know, showing how many chords we know, bullshit. You know, yeah, that's true. I love that. It's like the vocals when people do that vocal gymnastics yeah. and stuff. Yeah, don't. Yeah, I mean, it's good in small doses. Yeah, you know, uh, I think Farnham did it better than anybody. He had all those incredible chops. He's allowed uh, to. But he knew when to do that. Mm, that's know? right. Like... And, uh, the only person who gets away with it that is so damn musical it's unbelievable and you really can't get enough is stevie wonder oh yeah oh he's a genius that's right yeah i love that now what is left for you to do as an artist that you haven't yet had the chance to do um well i i fulfilled one of my dreams a couple of years ago by doing the soundtrack for a film it was a dennis quaid queen latifah film uh, called um, the Tiger Rising, and mm-hmm. uh, I wrote the whole uh, screenplay and and uh, all the, all the music. I wrote it all on my iPhone because we wow. were in lockdown. Yeah, and they sent me clips from the film, and I would write something, and then I would send it to the musical director of the film, Don Harper, in Los Angeles, and and he would listen to it. And he would orchestrate it and put like keyboards and strings and parts and then put it in the film and we'd have a listen, see if it worked. And then we'd move on to the next scene and all that. So, um, yeah, that was one of my one of my dreams to do something like that. Um, I I'd love to work on a on a on a big film um, and, uh, uh, you know, have have. Uh, uh, theme music that was uh, memorable and and uh, it penetrated people, you know. Yeah, like a John Williams. You know, you can't not think of Superman or Star Wars or anything. That guy, yeah, it was Schindler's List is amazing, mm. absolutely amazing. Excellent. Yeah. Now, what I do with everyone, I want you to look ahead to the future for me, Tommy, with a prediction. I want you to finish this sentence for me. By the end of twenty twenty three, Tommy Emmanuel will. Have a lot of new songs. There you go. That's always a good way to look at it. <laughs> That's brilliant. And before you run, I know you are a CGP, which I think is the most amazing thing in the entire well, world. I'm show it to you. Hang on. Okay. Yeah. See, this is one of the joys of doing Zoom. Yep. You can see it. Oh, nice. 
Excellent. <laughs> That's so good. There's yeah. only like five of you, I believe. There were. There are three of us left. Oh, that's a bit sad. Well, yeah. Well, um, yeah. Chet Atkins. Uh, it, it was Chet's thing. It was him. Yeah. He was. He was uh, trying to honour people who, you know, on my award here, it says, uh, presented to Tommy Emmanuel in recognition of his contributions to the art of finger picking. That's what it says. So amazing. Um, so you can make of that whatever you wish, but um, there's uh, uh, there's John Knowles who uh, I recorded an album of love songs called um, Heart Songs a couple of years ago, and there's Steve Warner who who was on my last tour in Australia. Oh, nice. Well, I like to think of myself as a CGP, but a crappy guitar player. Oh, okay. Well, hmm. I call myself a, a, a corny guitar player. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> 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 oh, love it. Tommy Emmanuel, thank you so much for your time, sir. It was a pleasure to Thanks, talk to you bro. today. Thank you, mate. Fantastic. All the best oh. and may the rock rock your world. I'll be a see you in Sydney. <laughs> see you, mate. See you, mate. Bye.